Hello, welcome to another sort of short engine build episode. The cart that I plan to put this in is not even underway yet. I'm just trying to get this thing ready to go to one, get parts off the shelf, and two, just have less to do when it comes time to actually assemble the cart. So this will be really straightforward, getting it set up with the right carb, get the governor fully removed, install the wet clutch there, and a couple other small little mods just to get this thing ready to go. That way, when it comes time to build the cart, it's just drop the engine in, build the exhaust, call it a day. This thing's already been used for a go-kart, so it has a normal style mower carb on it. I've only heard this thing run maybe a couple minutes when I first bought it. It was only $100. It's a 160, which isn't a lot. It's what, five and a half horsepower. Once we're done, that might be a little bit more, but we're not messing with timing, so it's kind of arbitrary. So it'll be a good little engine. And the main priority here is to be reliable and serviceable. I don't want to have to replace a clutch every year when they burn out. I'd rather do a wet clutch where I can just buy discs if I really have to do it. And these things are just bulletproof and it was $100. You can't go wrong there. I'd much rather have this than any sort of clone. So the goal right now is to get this engine plate off, get it prepped and painted. I have this Holden Blue, which has been on the shelf for a little while, so we're gonna use that. And depending on how that turns out, we'll determine if I'm gonna use this stuff, which is just clear coat with metallic flake in it. The side cover turned out pretty well. I'm happy with it. I ended up doing the clear metallic after all. It's gonna be really, really hard to see on camera. You're never gonna see it, I just thought it'd be neat to do it. I'm actually pretty happy with it. I ended up fully disassembling this, which getting the spring back in really sucked. Again, no one's ever gonna see it, but I like it, so whatever. We're gonna get this carb and air filter assembly off. I just put this air filter on for the sake of demonstration purposes. I took off the stock stuff a long time ago and I have no idea where it went. Um, I've probably thrown it away because I don't know why I would have kept it, but we are gonna swap this coil boot to this one, which is just looks a little bit neater and I hate this style. I think they're just ugly. So that'll sit like that. And they're actually super easy to swap out too. You just need the little type of connector that clips onto the top of the plug there. This one just threads on. There's a little like self tapper screw in there and that just threads into the bottom of the wire. So you just take that off and then you're gonna clamp this guy into here. You just slip it into the other boot. We can just throw this guy away because they're awful. I honestly hate this style air filter. I don't even know why I bought it. They're really excessive and I'm not a fan of them. And then the carb, this is just a standard mower carb, which has some adjustability, but not a ton, which is the issue. I want more adjustability. And I also want to be able to run a normal throttle cable very easily. So that's where this round slide comes in. And then this adapter, this is just a standard Predator adapter, which you can just buy like on eBay or whatever. They were a little bit longer. I wanted it shorter. So I just trimmed it a little bit, but it has the right flange for Hondas, obviously, because the clones are based off of Hondas. And I have no gaskets to install that. Um, tank can come off and honestly just probably go in the trash unless it looks really good inside. Because I don't need a bunch of tanks. Wow, wow things like brand new inside. So normally they have little studs. You can just use vice grips to get them out or the double nut procedure. I already had these out, so they were only really in there for mock-up purposes. And now I need a gasket, which that guy there is it. And again, I think if you just literally look up Predator intakes, these come up. They're just uh, really rudimentary aluminum adapters that allow you to run a spigot style carb, which is what we're doing. That's not right. Is this upside down? What? Am I stupid? Normally these engines have like a little phenolic thermal spacer that goes between the carb and the head. Uh, I don't have any and I'm not gonna run one. I don't think they're really necessary. I think it's more of a, uh, so the engines run optimally for a long period of time. And this is gonna be run not like a generator or a pressure washer, but more as a go-kart. So it doesn't really matter. Slip that guy on. What I did to get this piece of hose is I just took the carb to a parts store and I went to their back little like hose section. I just found one that was the right diameter and, and had some bends to it. That way I could cut it up the way I did. This engine seems to be in pretty good order. When I got it, the, uh, the person I got it from said it was used as a cable car engine, meaning like the little cart that drives along the cables of like power lines. This was the motor to move it along. So in theory, it would be pretty good condition because it was just putting you know, at set RPM for the duration of its life. 
but a kid or something did get a hold of it at some point because there's like big chunks. You can tell someone gouged up this crankshaft, looks like with a die grinder. There's weird damage, like two big cut marks right here. I guess there was a clutch on here and they got, got it stuck or something. So we're gonna pull this side cover off, remove what's left of this governor and then reseal it. And also just inspect like the crank journals, stuff like that, just to like ensure this thing is good to go. But really like not a ton of sludge, like not nearly as much as I was anticipating. Luckily the kid that they let use it didn't know anything. So governor was still attached. And the only modification was they took like the air filter cover off the top of the air filter. So it still had an air filter, but it had more airflow. They probably didn't hurt it all that bad. And they didn't just like run it no air filter at all, thinking they were gonna release all sorts of horsepower doing so. All in all pretty good. This gasket's gonna be a nightmare to get off of here. Cause it's all, yeah, it's gonna suck. So that's what I'm gonna be doing for the next like half hour. Cross hatching, still very visible on, there's a little bit of lateral scoring down along the base of the cylinder. I can't feel it, but I can see it. Again, probably just trash that was floating around in the engine from probably lack of oil changes. Really nothing too concerning. I definitely need to dump out what's here. There's a little bit of flake to it. The little governor arm here, I'm not sure if you can see it on camera, just needs to slide out pretty straightforward. The only issue is the crank gets in the way. So you gotta just like finagle it around. There you go, it's out. And the gear itself should just pop free. I'm not totally sure on that. Probably have to just pry on it and just see what it does. Uh, so not my favorite thing to do. So there's a stupid little snap ring that slides over the shaft of the governor sits on. Then the governor should just lift right off. There we go. Easy enough. The stud will stay in there. And all we have to do then is tap this hole up top to accept a bolt, which that looks like M6 thread pitch is gonna be the right one, but we're gonna figure that out here in a second. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean the underside here and I'm gonna put some tape on the back here and then tap through here. And that should hopefully contain most of the metal fragments. Then from there, I'll just flush out the crankcase using brake clean and you know make sure I got at least a large majority of the debris that's gonna go in here. I think I'll probably also do the trick of uh, putting grease on the tap. That way we just have a secondary way to try to catch anything that's gonna come free. I remember doing this on the GC series engine that's on the Bonanza mini bike right now. And I remember it being something weird and I don't remember why. And now I remember that it's an M7. I'm gonna put that in there. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw some thread sealant on it and then just thread it in. The thread stuff I use is lost apparently. Really old crappy tube, but it's thread sealant and Loctite and it shouldn't back itself out anytime in the future. The camera and the light are both dying and I filmed a whole segment without audio. So we are against the clock right now. Part of caring for this engine is that I wanna get a magnetic drain plug for it. So I took one of these out, measured the threads and it's an M10 by 1.25. And just because it doesn't say it fits your specific application, as long as you have your measurements right, there really shouldn't be any issue. So I just looked up M10 by 1.25 drain plugs and this one came up and it's actually pretty decent quality and it fits like Yamaha YZ125s and stuff. We're gonna take this one out. So we'll throw that guy in. I'm not gonna build an exhaust here because we're all, this is all about just modifying the engine. And as part of that, it's kind of good to know that these things exist. So these are flanges that are for these engines specifically. And they're like, I don't know, 316 or quarter inch plate. And I'm pretty sure these are from one of the power sport retailers or maybe like even eBay, but make it super easy to build a custom exhaust except you know the whole welding and fabricating part. So the parts have arrived, rather the gaskets, and then the oil seal, that one there, is that part number. Case cover is that, and then intake gasket is that. There might be a couple different part numbers for 160s. This is just my specific one, so double check yours if you're using this for part references. I also went ahead and took out the cam, not voluntarily, it, did, it fell out on its own, but in doing so, I took out all the components like push rods and lifters and stuff and then put assembly lube on it. And also just cleaned and double checked everything. The lifters looked fantastic. That's a good sign that I think this thing just had poor maintenance, not abuse. Okay. I don't know what the torque specs are for these, but I don't really care because it's not a high priority, but they're probably only like, you know, seven to nine foot pounds or something like that. Like really not a lot. 
I couldn't find a ton of information on this. What clutch case, I think it's probably just a clone one. The one thing I could find was Honda's recommendation that you use the same oil in this as you would the engine, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense since this has wet clutches in it. So we're gonna use 1030 motorcycle oil for this. And this has the modifiers for wet clutches. So that's what we're gonna do there. And then for the engine, we're just using regular 530 synthetic. This should just drop on just like that. And then looking at these teeth, this is definitely like probably a two to one. I should probably just count it because that's going to determine our top speed. 15 on the front, 28. So 15 to 28, which would be approximately two to one. So it's actually a little less than two to one. There's old RTV here, so I'm guessing there has to be some sort of seal here. We're gonna just use our best judgment of what to use which is not here, where is it? I have this stuff too, the Nissan, Subaru, Honda Bond sort of stuff. This tube might be dried out though. If this isn't dried out, I'll use this. I prefer to use one that, that gets used by car manufacturers versus the one that's just the generic from the parts store. I tend to trust people that spend a lot of money on R&D. As far as mounting bolts go, I think these are like a weird fine pitch SAE. I have to double check. I think they're like 5 16 by 20 or 24 or something like that. And I do have some, but I'm pretty sure these were like flywheel bolts or maybe, I'm not sure, but they're weird like 20 point head. So while they would work, that'd be a big middle finger to me in the future when I have to take this all back apart again. No, there we go. So it's it's a 12 point, 12 point 5 16 head. So we're gonna install the four with the RTV just to like secure it and let the RTV cure and then I'm gonna change these out. Okay, so it's all RTV'd up. It's not torqued down in place. It's just held in place temporarily just so everything cures. And then tomorrow I'll just buy matching hardware to install it all fully. New hardware's in. I had to do a little bit of machining to get this collar to slip down to the crankshaft. And by machining, I mean it's machining the crankshaft itself. Still move freely. Okay, so that's all good there. We won't know if it works until it doesn't. And my 10 mil is all now in the towel with all the RTV. So that's fantastic. I'm sure someone is very mad right now watching me do this. That I'm supposed to be using a paper gasket or a different RTV or whatever. And all I have to say to that is I looked for information and I could find nothing that's an absolute fact to be correct. Everything was opinions. I am going with what I think will work. And if it doesn't work, I'll try something else. <clears throat> I didn't mention it, but I did throw in a magnetic drain plug on this case as well. It just so happened to be like M12, I think. And I did just happen to have a couple spares of these cheap eBay ones. So we've gone ahead and just thrown that on as a preventative measure. I'm pretty happy with how the cover turned out. The new stickers arrived, obviously, so we got that installed. It's gonna sit there-ish. I think it's a pretty good place to wrap up. It looks pretty good. It's completed and fully serviced and also modded a little bit. This wasn't particularly a budget build, being that I bought the engine for basically retail, which was $100. The wet clutch, again, I paid pretty much retail for, which I think was 75 or some change. The cheap Makuni knockoff car was like $20. The little intake adapter, I think, was probably like 25 or something like that. And the whole goal here was to build it to still be reliable, but also be fun for the application it's gonna go into. All in all, I think about probably about 200 bucks in this engine, maybe 225, somewhere in there. Everything I used should be listed in the description, either a link or just the information I used to find the part. And if I missed anything, just let me know. But with all that being said, thanks for watching and stay tuned. Um, oops, that sounded bad. Not sure what that just was. I guess that all was not on footage. Fuck you, go in the trash, asshole. Somehow there's like a little wad of orange hair around my drill press. That's really gross. Where did that come from? There's a little ginger gremlin running around here or something. Okay. Can you see that well? Blink twice if you're in trouble. So I guess we can go ahead and just crack this open, see how it do. I have successfully jammed the engine up with the arm of the governor. So, come on. Why are you, why are you also magnetic? Why is everything magnetic? And I'm six by. Thank you, lights. You work for 15 seconds and then you're dead. These batteries suck ass.